So, uh, we'll move on with uh, a, again, special type of motion which has constant acceleration. When you have a constant acceleration, the uh, equation that you see on the board, the velocity equation, is instantaneous equation. So, this is the uh, instantaneous equa equation for velocity for constant accelerated motion, okay? Uh, you have an initial velocity, V0, a constant, plus A times T. Your velocity increases with this uh, multiplication of the acceleration with time. If you uh, check the V versus time graph of this constant velocity motion, you will see a straight line, okay? But, again, this is not position versus time graph. This is velocity versus time graph. The position versus time graph is not a straight line curve in the case of constant accelerated motion. <clears throat> you can always ask the average velocity for a constant accelerated motion, and if your motion is limited on time, for example in here, starts from zero on time, uh, to a specific value of time, the average velocity is always the midpoint, okay? And this midpoint is nothing but the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2. This is the average velocity for a constant uh, velocity motion, but we already know that we also have the average velocity expression in terms of the position, displacement, and time, okay? Remember that. V was defined, V average, as X final minus X initial. From now on, I will drop I will drop this uh, final subscription, okay, this, whenever you see x, this is final position. Whenever you see, you see x0, x0, this means the initial position, when time t is equal to 0, okay? So you divide by the total time, delta t, because t0 is always 0, so total time is t. This is the average velocity in terms of uh, the displacement and time. But <coughs> in here, you see the expression of the average velocity in terms of the initial and final velocities, okay? Not the displacement. This information is important when you are uh, trying to obtain the x versus t expression for a constant accelerated motion. Let's do it. So you have the average velocity defined in terms of uh, displacement, and you have the average velocity defined in terms of the initial and final velocities. And the final velocity can be uh, replaced by this expression, right? Because V is always V0 plus A times T. So if you replace this in here, in the second equation, and since these are the same things, you can equate this one to the second one, this one, right in here, to get an expression for position in the case of constant acceleration motion. So what you get if you do the rest is this expression the position of the object in as a function of time is initial position plus the initial velocity times t plus one half the acceleration times t square. This is true only if you have constant acceleration, okay? Well, if you have acceleration is equal to zero, then just put uh, a is equal to zero is what you have is x is equal to x zero 
plus v zero t. This is the formula for position in the case of constant velocity. But if you have constant acceleration, you have an additional term. You may have obtained this expression by using integral calculus. Okay? And let me quickly do it in here. Start with the definition of the acceleration in math. Remember A. Uh, let me write it down. Uh, give it a different color. Remember A was is equal to in terms of derivatives dv divided by dt, right? And if A is constant, this uh, differentiation is constant. You multiply both sides by dt and you obtain on the right hand side A times dt and on the left hand side you have the differential dv. What happens if you take the integral of both sides? It's very easy. You can always take the integral of both sides. Since the integration uh, variable on the left is over time, the, your integration limits must be in terms of time, right? And time is always starting at zero. And you put t on top. And on the right hand side, since the integration variable is v, the velocity, the integration uh, limits must be in terms of velocity. And the initial velocity is v0, of course. This is always given in the problems. And your final v. And the rest is very easy. Uh, a dt is, a is constant, integral of t is t, right? t minus 0. So you have on the left hand side a t. And on the right hand side you have v minus v 0. This is something you know, I assume. Okay? It's very uh, basic integration. So what you obtain is actually you recover the velocity as a function of time. v 0 plus a times t in the case of constant accelerated motion, again. But, you, well, this is a velocity, but you want to get an expression for position. So move on. What was V? V was dx over dt, right? And on the right-hand side, what you see, everything is constant. V0 is constant. And A is constant, but you have the variable T. Again, you may multiply both sides by DT, the differential in T. So on the left-hand side, you will have DX, V0, DT, plus A, T, DT. Again, the same trick. You take the integral of both sides, and the integration on the left uh, side you will have uh, since you have uh, x as the integration variable your limit is from initial position to final position and on the right hand side the integration variable is t again 0 to t so the left integration again is easy dx integrated it's a definite integral x minus x0 so x minus x0 what is v dt v times t, sorry, this is v0, v0 times t, plus, and this whole thing is in parentheses, what is integral at dt? What is the integration of t dt? Integration of t dt is t squared over 2, right? If you take the derivative of t squared over 2, you get t dt, right? So think in reverse. You have a t square divided by 2. And what you obtain is the expression for x, x naught plus v0 t plus 1 half a t square. This is how you obtain the expression for x by using 
integral integral calculus. Okay, and this method is we have derived the position versus time by using the algebraic expressions. Okay, there is no differentiation or integration in here. All right, so <coughs> we have everything. We have x position uh, as a function of time, v uh, velocity as a function of time, and a is always constant. There is a very simple example. You can work this out. <coughs> but even you face with the simplest example or problem, one thing is you should do is first, you draw your coordinate system. Okay, You pick up a origin, draw a coordinate system, which direction is increasing and which direction is decreasing because this will be very important when you write down the minus or plus sign for A or V. Okay? The first thing is choose your coordinate system, for example, for the motion of this ship. Uh, this is your origin and ship is going toward, according to you, left and left is positive X direction. Okay? Because the arrow shows left and there are positive quantities on this axis on the left side. If you go left, you increase x. You may as well, of course, do the opposite. I, I mean, you may do this. This is x and here. But the ship will go in the negative x direction th this time if you choose this axis. So I leave it to you. There is uh, one equation that you can derive from uh, these two equations. Uh, x in terms of uh, final and uh, initial velocities and time, and also x in terms of uh, only uh, as a function of time. So if you solve t, solve for t for this equation, and replace the expression in the second equation, you will eliminate all t variables and you will end up with this equation containing only velocities, position, and acceleration. You see, there is no time in here. If you are given an object and it is uh, accelerating constantly, if you are given only the final and initial uh, 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 velocities, then you may find easily the position the final position without knowing the time okay so this one useful expression uh, for v as a function of a and uh, x there is no time in here okay so as I said <sighs> you had a straight line for a constant acceleration motion in uh, uh, for v versus time graph, but for x versus time, you won't have a constant uh, straight line if you have a constant acceleration, non zero constant acceleration. For x, you will have a parabola. This is a curve, and x is increasing in time, not in a linear fashion, but in a quadratic fashion. And uh, this is, you may know, already from high school and from your previous math courses since x depends on t squared this is this is a kind of expression called a quadratic equation if you had t cube in time what kind of equation that we call this a cubical dependence on t that time you will have a cubic equation in time for x uh, and of course it has a different uh, uh, curve it will be again a non straight not straight line but it's a curve anyway for constant accelerated motion this is the kind of uh, curve that you have in uh, x you may immediately tell me that what is the initial position for this kind of curve initial position is zero you can easily see in here what about the initial velocity for this specific type of curve? And remember, you can get the velocity information in the position time graphs 
by just making some tangent lines at, at certain points. If you are, for example, uh, curious about the instantaneous velocity at point 2, what you do is just to draw a tangent line at that point and calculate its slope, that's it. If the tangent line is parallel, that means your velocity is zero. And only at the origin, this tangent line is parallel. So your velocity, initial velocity is zero for this kind of, for this specific motion. Okay. So these are the expressions of chapter two uh, for a specific type of motion which is called constant accelerated motion and you have everything uh, in these equations that you can uh, you will use all any of these equations in your uh, solving problems let's do an example <sighs> suppose you are going with your car with a constant velocity and just a, a deer pumped up on in front of you and you have some distance, you hit the brakes in order to avoid hitting the uh, deer. Of course, during the brakes, uh, the car's velocity will be decreasing, right? And suppose this decreasing in velocity is constant. That means you have a constant deceleration, okay? Again, you uh, start the motion when just you hit the brakes, okay? And that means uh, when your car is going with a constant velocity, right at this point, it starts decreasing its velocity. So you can choose your coordinate system to the right and as the origin is this point, okay? And you can choose right at the point when you hit the brake, where you would hit the brake. So... Of course, the car will again travel some distance by decreasing its speed. Uh, you won't stop immediately right after you hit the brake. And uh, you will travel some distance. The question is, what is this stopping distance? Uh, right from the point where you hit the brakes to the point you stop, what is the distance of the car traveled? So again, you see, uh, the acceleration is given with this choice of coordinate system. If you go right with respect to you, and since the right direction is the increasing x direction, and since you are decreasing the velocity, your a acceleration must be a negative quantity. Okay, this is very important. Uh, you will pick up a negative a. And then you can use, as I said, there is no time information. You can use easily this uh, velocity expression in terms of a and delta x. Uh, the question in here is to find this delta x. And you can always pick up the initial position as zero. And the final velocity is, in fact, given in the problem implicitly, right? The problem does not tell you that final velocity of the car is zero. But you should assume, since the car st is stopping, right, the final velocity must be zero, right? So this is implicit. Uh, you put zero on the left-hand side. You calculate the stopping distance as a function of the initial velocity of the car and the acceleration of the car. You see, there is a minus sign in here. You may object that, okay, you will have a negative distance. In fact, no, because a is negative, okay? Two negatives will give you a positive stopping distance. And check this. As long as A is constant, the stopping distance goes with the square of the initial velocity. If you double the initial velocity, your stopping distance will be four times larger. So that's why you should go slow with your car. If you increase your speed, if you are going fast, stopping distance uh, will depend on the square of the velocity, okay? This is very hard uh, for high speeds to stop you. 
uh, when you hit the brake. So if you do the rest, just a, a mat, and you will uh, obtain the stopping distance as 17.1. You see here, I uh, in the problem, sometimes you may ask, okay, minus 3.8, but why it is written as minus 3.80? The difference is you have three significant figures in here, right? And three significant figures in V0, and your result must have three significant figures. If in your calculator this goes like 17.1234, whatever, you just cancel all the extra digits, run this off to have three significant figures. This is not always asked in the problems, but Anyway, just to make you remember uh, these uh, calculations with the significant figures. So, if the deer was initially at a distance of 20 meters, then the deer is saved because you already stop at 17.1. There is no danger for uh, the deer. And the next question might be, what is the stopping time? To find the stopping time, you may use this expression for V uh, as a constant uh, velocity motion, it is V0 times AT, and everything is known in here because the final velocity is 0, the initial velocity is 11.4, and the A is minus 3.8. You can uh, solve for T, it is 3 seconds. Well, I written down 3.0 because I used two significant figures with A, okay? But I should write it down as uh, 3.80, not 8 then you would have at the end 3.00 to make it correct number of significant figures. And the next is a little harder. You have two cars, one is a cup, and this is something you very often see in the movies. Uh, the car is, the red car is speeding very fast, it's going uh, with a constant velocity, but it's going fast. And there is a cop waiting on the highway uh, at rest, and so this car speeding very fast and decides to catch this car because he's gonna get a, a speeding ticket. So the cop, since it is initially at rest, it will accelerate, of course, right? It must accelerate to catch the car. And the question is, the, the, in the problem, it is given that this uh, velocity of the red car is 17.9 meter per second. And the speeding of the uh, cup is given as the acceleration having 4.51 meter per second square. The question is, uh, when the cup catches the red car, the time of catching, also, uh, when the cup catches the red car, do they travel the same distance? Right the point uh, when the red car passes by the cup. They must have traveled the same distance, right? Because the cup catches the car, right? And you can express this in a velocity uh, uh, position versus time graph with this. The red, car, the red uh, straight line is showing the uh, distance uh, position of the red car because it's going, it's going with constant velocity. So its uh, uh, curve must be a straight line. In the other hand, the cup is accelerating. So the x for the cup is a quadratic in T, it must be a parabola, but this parabola crosses this straight line at some point, and this is the point where the cop catches the car, and you will find this distance, okay? So you may use x, usual x is equal to x0 plus v0 t, well half t square. You can, uh, ha but this time you will have two different equations. One equation for the red car, which is a constant uh, uh, velocity motion, x will be equal to x0 plus the v of the red car, the speed of the red car, times t. On the other hand, the position for the cup will be x0 plus v 
0 times t plus 1 half a t squared because it's accelerating. Okay? So these two equations must be equal to each other because they travel the same distance when the cop catches the uh, car. By equating these, you can easily solve t for that, and t will depend on the twice the velocity of the speeding car, the red car, divided by the acceleration of the cop. This is the expression you will find, and if you plug and chuck the numbers, you will obtain the uh, answer as 7.93 seconds. And if you uh, use this in one of the equations, either you can use a uh, equation for red car or the position equation for the cup, you will get the same answer, 142 meters as the catching distance. So the rest is uh, to find the velocity of the car right at the catching point. It will be twice the velocity of the red car. You can easily uh, check this by using V uh, versus time equation. So uh, this is another uh, example. I think we should stop here. And well, we have next thing after Bayram, we will cover free fall. And as I said, you will have the first lap after Bayram and your homework after Bayram.